hello guys welcome back to the channel if you're a new subscriber thank you so much for choosing this channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for always always coming back to view my contents today i'll be reading from the book of second samuel chapter 23 and it reads thus now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of Jehovah spake by me. His word was in my tongue. And the God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things, and sure, for this is all my salvation, and all my desire. Although he make it not to grow, but the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them sh must be fenced with iron, and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tatmanite that sat in the sea, chief among the captains, the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against eight hundred whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defiled the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and Jehovah wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil and after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines. And Jehovah wrought a great victory. Now we are seeing where David, he would have fought that day until his hands were tired, his hands were sore. And not only that, but his hand held it even when he didn't want to hold it. His hands were painful to let go of that sword. Now can you imagine? And he was victorious. Why was he victorious? He wasn't victorious because of his own doing. He was victorious because God was in the midst of the battle. David was fighting, but he was never fighting alone. Even though he had his men to fight with him, but God was with David. As stated here in verse 12, it says, And Jehovah wrought a great victory. So it wasn't David's doing. 
that he would have won. It was victory attained by the hands of God. So let's continue. And three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest, in the harvest time, sorry, unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley Rephim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men brake through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto Jehovah. And he said, Be it far from me, O Jehovah, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. When you hear of the word mighty, you are thinking of some persons who are big, and strong those are the words that describes mighty and it could be that they are strong-willed so here we are seeing some men who I would say were men of built and very strong not only strong in body but their mind they were headstrong and they decided that I'm gonna do this because they heard they respected David in such a way that they risked their lives to go and get water for David. David was so thirsty and he yearned to drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. And these men they risked their lives for David to go and fetch him this water. They broke through the garrisons. They didn't care that the Philistines were there because they too must have had some faith in God. And David could not drink it because of the, the way these men, the way these men put their lives in jeopardy to go and get the water for David. So David would not drink of it. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three and he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and had the name among three was he not most honorable of thee therefore he was their captain howbeit he attained not unto the first three but Benaiah the son of Jehoiada the son of a valiant man of Cabezel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. Lion-like. Did they look like lion? No. But I am guessing that they were so strong, they behaved, their behavior, their traits would be lion-like. And lion are fierce, very fierce animals. So I am suspecting that these men were fierce. All right. He went down and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff and plucked the pier out of the Egyptians. Why did I say pier? Am I thinking of Peer? No. But he plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Joahiah, and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three 
and David set him over his guard. This is where I'll end the reading. Now, in the beginning chapter, we can see where it says that David, those were his last words. Alright, so I'm guessing it is nearing the time for David's death. And he was telling them, he was leaving them instructions, he was talking to them. Remember when Samuel was on his way out. All these men that I can remember, they always try to leave their legacy behind. They would talk to their tribes, they would talk to their people, and they were leaders who were men of righteousness. Yes, David was one such man. He was not perfect, but David sought after God's heart. He tried to do the things that were right in the sight of God. Let us too also yearn after things that are of God. Amen. Thanks be to God for these words. Lord, walk beside me, lead me, and guide me, and take all those memories of sinning. Lord, till I feel your heart's beat, and don't let me wander away. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, we worship you, mighty God, we magnify your name. Lord, I'm asking you for your holy presence to tabernacle round about us. Shelter us, Almighty God, while the snares and the traps are being set. We are asking you, Heavenly Father, to back back every plan of the evil forces, the evil ones. We are asking you to encamp around us, round about. We are asking you, Almighty God, to continue walking with us so that we won't have to walk alone. And help us that we will not walk away from you, but we will continue walking faithfully with you. Lord, bless, guide, and instruct, and direct our path. We pray while we wait on our blessings, and we tell you thanks. Amen and amen. Thank you to each and every one who have watched the video thus far. May you be blessed. May your entire household be blessed. And may you too walk faithfully with God. We will continue to take in a bit of the view. And this is where I say goodbye. Walk good. Be blessed. And be a blessing. Thank you for watching.